I, I was in Davos, Switzerland in 2007. Michael Dell had invited me to the World Economic Forum. I got to the Belvedere Hotel. I had my best first impression suit on. <laughs> was this the same one you used at your interview with Goldman? He was taking one of these. I was more polyester when I saw it. Read the book. Oh, but we're going to go to that second. I thought I looked fantastic in that first job. I had a 100% poly black suit on. I had a 100% white poly shirt. You know, I had the whole sheen going. Charlie sheen, Charlie sheen. I had the winning, winning. I had the black. We don't tie going. <laughs> and I had shoes that were a lot pointier than they should have been for 1988. <laughs> and I showed up at that interview, Brian's laughing because he knows all these, and I showed up at that interview, Michael Facitelli, who hired me, he, he pulled me out of the Charles Hotel in Cambridge, he put his arm around me, he says, look, you're a really smart kid, but you dress like, and we'll leave it at that, because it's a Christian setting, you dress like, really? I think it looks fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about an arbitrage of misperception. So I had to go to well, the you got a job. <laughs> I, I got the job. I had to go to the custom shop. Remember the custom shop? Yeah. But by the way, just, just you know, Mahaffey and a few of the guys are all having a, a, a side bet as to whether or not you're going to get away the whole session without using the F bomb. Okay, let's <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, it's a close major right now. <laughs> Machine Lord, forgive me for that. Hey, what do you say to that? Sorry, you're back to the custom shop. I've done 150 live hours of television this year. Now, one F bomb. My mother says, Is there any chance we could have a CNBC camera in my living room? You come to visit me? Come on, I'm really trying to reform myself. I promise you, no F bombs. But, but, so, but anyway, I got the suit from the custom shop and the four shirts, went down on my interview with Goldman, and did get that job. But I got fired from that job. Fired. One year and five months after I got that job, I got fired. So hold on, you got fired. You're a rising young buck, dreaming your life, and you get fired. What happened? It, well, okay, because I did everything. I did everything wrong. You know, like when I speak at these schools, I tell the kids the same thing. You know, you know, when when I was Obama and I were fighting with each other on CNBC. I'll show that clip in a second. Okay, but but so I my. The dean of the Harvard Law School is a woman named Martha Minow. She was my civil procedure professor. Got along with her great. She's now the dean. Um, and so she read my book. She calls me saying, I love your book. I'm going to have students come and, and meet with you. If, would you come up here? I said, fantastic. So a week before, she calls me. She says, you know, I'm like embarrassed. I only have like 15 people that have signed up for this thing. I don't want you to come to Boston just for 15 minutes. I said, Martha, are you kidding me? Of course I'm coming. Those are 15 new people that are going to open my book. Then Obama and I are sparring with each other on CNBC. We both had went to Harvard Law School at the same time. We remembered each other from law school. I'll cue that up when you're done. 350 say. people showed up. <laughs> 350 people. Okay. But I, I just want to make this statement. So I'm sitting there with the kids. I said, look, I did everything wrong coming out of school. I wanted the coolest job the trendiest job. I wanted the job where I could walk into the cocktail party and I could say, hey, I got the, what was the cool job? Goldman Sachs, this is 1989. Goldman Sachs, real estate finance. That was the coolest job. You know that was the worst job on earth for me? And I was terrible at it. But I charmed my way into that job. I got it. I had better suits on, more wool in the suit. <laughs> Showing up down there. And I was terrible at it. And you know what? A year and five months later, into the recession of 1990, I got fired from the job. Because you got to think about that, right? Now, I did, I just want to say these two yeah, things. I want these people to know this. I did two stupid things entering Goldman Sachs. I mean, I did a lot of stupid things, but these are the two big ones. Are you ready? Number one, I failed the New York State Bar. I came out of Harvard Law School, failed the New York State Bar. I got a 65.6 on the bar, we did a 66. And New York State does not round up, we learned. <laughs> I missed it by one multiple choice question. And what was I doing? Manhasset Bay is about seven miles away. I was water skiing in Manhasset Bay that summer because smug, arrogant me, I thought I went to Harvard Law School, I'll read these little bar review exams, never got a 66 on an exam. That test you really had to study for, okay? 
So I failed the bar exam. The day after I found out that I failed, New York Post article, the hump that flunks. You turn the page, it's John F. Kennedy Jr. He bought it on the same day as me. We're separated by his good looks and about seven inches of height. <laughs> Looking at that, my God, this poor guy. You know, I mean, I'm failing and embarrassing myself in front of my employer and my friends, but he's failing in this national audience. But I failed the bar. Number two, how many people here have taken the Series 7? Yeah. Okay, does anybody remember Series 7 chicken? Fine, you remember that? Okay, what Series 7 chicken? Cocky trainees in the training class. Bull market. No one plays Series 7 chicken now with 35% unemployment coming out of these colleges. But Series 7 chicken was 40 guys in the Goldman training class, men and women, $200 a piece, an $8,000 pot, which was a lot of money back then. The person with the lowest passable score wins the pot. Who do you think won that? I was in there, I was erasing answer. I needed the money so bad. I was in that high school. Remember that high school by the Horizon? So you're trying to manage your score. I was managing my score to a 72. Okay? And I had studied, I had overstudied for that test. I got the score. So essentially you have to ace it in order to. I got the score down to a 72, and I submitted the test. And I won the $8,000. The only problem was I was the only one playing Series 7 chicken that morning. All of my peers got 85, 95, 100. Okay, they, what did they do? They were a lot smarter than me. They took the $200 in because they had the peer pressure. And they went on to get very high grades on that time. I walked into Goldman. I had failed the bar. And I got a 72 on the Series. I didn't think that was working for me at Goldman. Are you kidding? Okay, one year and five months later, I was fired. Okay, so then I'm sitting there with Mike Facitelli, who hired me, he fires me, he hands me an $11,000 severance check. I am like totally dejected. It's February 1st, 1991. It's 20 years ago last month. I go back home. So what am I going to do now? I went to Harvard Law School. I've been fired from my first job. Okay, so I start panicking. I'm dialing people. Trying to get on the phone with people. Goldman Sachs has an offering in the equities division on the sales side. So I apply for the job. I apply for other jobs. And the guy that was running was Bill Groover. He wasn't hiring me. I got a job offer from First Boston at that time and Morgan Stanley, and then Goldman gave me an offer. And I worked with Ron Garrow. So I'm not sure if all this stuff is. Is that better? Maybe a little lower work, okay. I think you're good, I lowered mine. You're good. So I worked with Ron Garrow. Thank you for helping me get that job, by the way, Ron. Okay, so I got rehired into Goldman. So then I get the call from personnel. What does personnel say to me? They get me on the phone and say, hey, Anthony, we got great news for you. You know, we're going to just mark this as an interdepartmental transfer. You're never going to have to tell anybody that you were fired. I said, okay, that's great. Can we get the $11,000 back, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you can't get the $11,000 back. That went to the custom shop. <laughs> you can tell the entire planet that I got fired. I don't care. And that, that woman is still at Goldman. It was Tony and Bonte. And you know what she She marked me down as an interdepartmental transfer. She was very nice about it. But, but, I wanted to tell the truth in my book. I wanted, you know, like young kids, like when you get, you can get the Hollywood version of someone's life. I can tell you, you know, I grew up in a middle class home, went to Tufts and Harvard Law School, self financed most of it, went to Goldman for seven years. Then I left and started a business, sold it to Newberger Berman. Newberger got sold to Lehman. Then I left Lehman propitiously. I didn't know that at the time. Well, you didn't know the word propitious, or you didn't? Do that? <laughs> <laughs> I am a smart man, but that, that word I knew. I did pretty well. In you left that one. I, mean, I had to. I, 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 yeah, I, I did pretty well. Yeah. I did pretty well in the SAT. I'm pretty good at cross too. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but there I was. Okay, and, and the uh, you know, I mean, I, I'll, I'll make this point to you. I would rather have like the real story told to kids, particularly my children than the Hollywood story. I'd rather have them hear the e-Hollywood story and the struggle, right? Okay, but I want to say one thing. I know he's going to, because I'm dominating the conversation, but I just want to say this. So down, You're on a roll. That's all right. We're talking about God, okay? 